Welcome to the worst day of my whole life. Yep, we very nearly got dragged onto rocks attached to another boat by a chain. I was swinging off a propeller and... Yeah, lots of action in this episode. Uh, Riley needed stitches. Uh, but anyway, we're going to start from the very beginning. regular day apart from the fact that it was blowing anywhere between 35 and 42 knots. Holy um, We'd been anchored in Ow. a very sheltered bay on the island of Nisos Seraphos so we had a quick sail from Poros which is where you would have seen us last in the last episode to take shelter from the Meltemi wind. The Meltemi is a breeze that blows from the north when you're in Greece particularly in the summer months. We've spoken about this in a few episodes but everyone knows about it, everyone runs for cover when it's coming and historically it's been the downfall of many many vessels over the years. We are in such a beautiful place too but we couldn't leave the boat because the missions to shore and back on the dinghy were like an adventure in itself so we were basically stuck inside listening to crime podcasts about my pal Kayla and Troy <laughs> Kayla, yeah. just hoping like Riley was diving on the anchor twice a day to make sure we stayed put um, and just you know buying yeah, time. Perfect. Yeah. We just went and woke the dudes up on that boat, I don't know if they were sleeping but they were certainly down below because I've been using them as a landmark. And I just saw them drifting, they were sideways, which is a dead giveaway. And when I saw the anchor rope out the front, I was like, they're dragging anchor. So me and Lena burned over there and woke them up. They said that they were all right and that we could leave and mm. leave them do their thing, reset the anchor. So that guy next to us dragged anchor. Now, in order to fully understand what we're trying to explain to you, we're gonna talk a little bit about anchoring. It's very important to know what depth of water you're in and then to let out an appropriate amount of scope because it's not the anchor that holds you in place necessarily, it's the amount of chain that you've got out and what's called the catenary. Now, I'm not gonna go into too much more detail apart from the fact that I would say you need to dive on your anchor and make sure that it is nicely dug into the sand. And if it's blowing 40 knots like it was for us, you wanna have that even more like what we did. Then there are things like snubbers and stuff like that, but I'm not gonna go into too many more details. That's enough for everyone to be up to speed with the story that we're trying to explain at the moment. What happens next is a guy comes and anchors over on top of our anchor, we become fouled and we both start drifting out to sea. Yeah, I heard this loud horn and I run out the back and there is a beautiful cream colored super yacht with a crew of like eight in like their uniforms Top at the front colors. of the boat, like, go, go, like just yelling at us because we're drifting really quick. Not helping. Um, <laughs> they couldn't do much, but anyway, we nearly got wrapped around. Good, the we got nearly got wrapped around this super yacht, and um, I was at the helm, we all got to our stations, and it was up to me because um, the motorboat we were attached to had no engine, like he was powerless, and we didn't know why. Anyway, so I had the engines and I just had to gun it in reverse and forwards and just dodge this super yacht. Um, <laughs> what are you doing there? We're on back in the moment, which turns out wasn't a good thing because um, then we were all drifting out to sea. Yeah, it probably would have been a good thing if we wrapped around the super yacht. But anyway, here is the first clip. This is what we managed to capture on camera um, after dodging the super yacht. After we've been drifting for a little bit, I thought the best idea would be to jump in the water and have a bit of a look. What I saw was our anchor chain going from our anchor well into his propeller. There was a big tangle there and then there was more loose chain going to our anchor, which was tangled to his anchor and then his anchor chain just went up into the front of his anchor well. My job was to try and organise how to untangle this huge mess. We were drifting further and further away and as we were getting further out, the waves were building because we'd gone from a protected bay to essentially open water. And whilst I was underneath, I was trying to unwrap the chain from around this propeller. And I got that back off and then another one, I actually got uh, George from the other boat to give me a rope. George is the name of the captain on the other boat. I free dove down and tied a knot 
to the chain to, so that he could take some pressure off so I could keep trying to untangle the chain from the propeller. But in the end, um, it was kinked. The chain was actually biting on itself and I was like, you know, it, the, it was going up and down and it got me yeah. in the arm, the propeller did and there was barnacles and I was cut. And, yeah, from, and from my like, perspective, like I was, I was suddenly the captain of our boat because Riley had jumped in the water and tried to free us. And like then I saw him climb out of the water after just panicking, I was like, if Riley hits his head, because the boat's slamming, yeah, with every wave, the boat's slamming, and he's under there, and I was just in all sorts, just so worried. And then I saw him climb out, and he kind of just shook his head at me, and there was blood, and I was like, oh no, because like, that was quite an emotional moment, because for me, like, Riley's always just been this monkey man, and he's just gotten us out of all of these sticky situations. And I just put so much faith in him, I was like, yes, he's gonna get us out, it's, it's happening, like, everything's gonna be okay, and to see him shake his head, and and to just know that that's it, I'll like, I, I was just... Stealing apples from his neighbor's tree. So after I decided that it was too dangerous to continue, I climbed up onto the back of the other boat and uh, saw George's wife and two kids both just crying like it was really bad. So I went over and I was hugging them and um, like assuring them that everything was going to be fine and I was covered in blood and then they got blood on them and then George was giving me drinks of Fanta and stuff to try to like calm the situation down. Okay, anchors are represented by keys, anchor chain is represented by string and La Vagabond is represented because we keep getting shit about our new fancy boat by a disco ball for that. <laughs> so, what happened was we were safely anchored here for three days. Everything was going quite well. Along comes, now, George, I met him and he, he's a good bloke. He just, he made, he made a mistake, which is totally fine. The anchor came, his anchor came down on top of ours, fouled our anchor. We all started drifting off. Then we started, then he realized, oh no, we've, um, we're drifting. He gunned it and our chain came so tight underneath his boat that it actually caught in his prop. So now our anchors are tangled and our chain is caught in his propeller. And now we're drifting off and we're just in all sorts from that point forth, Elena. They were very concerned about how we were gonna be rescued. Now the boats in the bay, all of the other cruisers on the beach, they weren't gonna be able to help us because... Um, they were holding on for dear life. Yeah. They couldn't possibly come out and drag us both into, into land. Exactly. You could have saved La Vagabond. Yeah, I could have saved La Vagabond by chopping the anchor road, but we didn't want to do that because George would have been powerless and just drifting out to sea, possibly into cliffs, and we couldn't do that to him. We couldn't have that, especially because I was on their boat. Yeah. <laughs> Somewhere along the way, um, we'd gotten in contact with the Coast Guard, which was quite difficult. And um, we were drifting for Yeah, a we knew they were on their way, but we drifted out to sea for another hour and a half, and it was hell, it was quite scary. But then we saw the fishing boat rock up, and I really didn't know how they were going to be able to drag us back to shore. Um, but, you know, after a few ropes being tied, and, and we were attached to George's boat, whose boat was attached to the fishing boat, just in a line, and we slowly, very slowly, made it back to land. to move spots for us so we could go into their spot just on the outside of the marina there and this for me was the most scariest part because we were at the end of the of the line what would you call that we were at the end of the line and I don't think the fishing boat could see how close we were getting to the ferry dock and rocks that were nearby and I just kept yelling like tell them to go forwards more yeah and it was so stressful I thought here was gonna be the place where our boat was gonna get washed up on the rocks um, but anyway, they managed to go forwards enough for our, our boat to swing in place.
we managed to throw our lines and get tied off and I basically just fell on deck. I was like, thank God. And then um, George managed to throw his lines and he came in next to us, tied off to our boat. And then it was time for a drink and a bit of a debrief. Not even yet. Now he talked about insurance and, you know, um, George had arranged for a scuba diver to come and, and look at his propeller. Oh, because when did we get to relax? Because... <laughs> <laughs> Lifted and pulled off one. I lifted and pulled, tried to pull off another, but it's because it's chain. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Look, yeah. I also did it 40 knots out there, Fredon. Before we could relax, we thought we'd better glue up Riley. He had some deep cuts on his shoulder and wrist from George's propeller. I think it's a really blunt, well, it's not a sharp propeller, is it? So is it, it's like a tear rather than a cut. Chop. I can't remember if that was the second or third time I'd had to patch up Riley this year. It's good that he has a sense of humour when he's hurt, but it's always pretty stressful and scary having to deal with things like this. That. Yeah, it was a very tough day, but it tested on me that, on so many different levels. Well, so I'd like to uh, say a very special thank you to Kayla and Daniel who came on board in particular, um, and of yeah. course Elena. Everyone made really excellent decisions, no one panicked, uh, it was just fantastic by everyone on board particularly our vessel. I woke up and there was just chaos and um, started yelling orders. Elena just nailed them and that was the first thing when we missed that, uh, the super yacht. And then from there, it was just a well-organized, very um, contained uh, operation by the people on board La Vagabond. I no, it was, it was really good. I'm so, I'm so proud of all four of us for how we handled the situation. I thought I was gonna just melt so many times, but it was crazy. I didn't I didn't leave the helm for what two and a half hours. I had to I was constantly yeah. using the engine and, and it was the hardest thing I've ever had to do. Like Kayla was feeding me water and coming and giving me hugs and I was just <laughs> putting on my brave face like when is this gonna end? Like when is this gonna end? Yeah. Anyway, we did it and we're safe and you're healed. Mm. Sort of got a little while yet, but some of the things that I would say that I've learned from this experience would be um, how quickly things can change, definitely, and I think you... Oh, you know story of my life. <laughs> and um, I think some of the, the different ways that you can come into trouble, so we're always worried about um, storms and weather and stuff like that, and certainly weather had played a, a part in this, it would never have been quite so bad, but it, it wasn't that, it was the unexpected outside things when you're not really paying attention you think you're totally fine yeah. and then all of a sudden something like that happens so yeah I, I think th they're the main things that I'll take out of that and we did the best we could we went in a protected anchorage we anchored um, to dodge the wind and it wasn't actually you know we did everything we could yeah. and, and this happened so. yeah thanks for watching that video if you liked it give it a like yeah, if you're please new here, give it subscribe. a like. We really appreciate it. Today. <laughs> we need one. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Cheers, guys. I'm very happy to say that you will be joining us next week for another Sailing the Vagabond episode because the boat is okay and we're okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. Thanks. See ya.